Hey up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire Geek. It's time to review episode 4 of season 5 of Star Trek Lower Decks, A Farewell to Farms. And I suggested last week, when we knew the title, that I wonder if they were going to go back to the, the farm planet that were in the very first episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. And uh, I'm happy to say I was 100% wrong. Because <laughs> they don't go back to that planet. Uh, we're going to Kronos. Uh, in this episode, and it's a, it's an okay episode. It's not my favourite, uh, but you know it was enjoyable. But it, it did seem a bit fillery, to be honest. Um, but anyway, um, I don't know why we had this episode, to be completely honest. But it it was enjoyable. Both both plots, there's an A plot and a B plot. Um, both plots seem like totally unconnected. And there's, a, there's like an overall, you know, the overall story arc about the, um, whatchamacallit's thingamabobs, doodahs, I forgot what they are, um, quantum fishes, the overall story arc about that is mentioned, uh, but it's got nothing, it's got bugger all to do with the, the A plot and the B plot. But anyway, um, so, right, we will, uh, we'll, we'll get into it, shall we? And, um, and we'll, we'll, uh, talk about, uh, what happens in this episode. Although, you know, I'm moaning about it a bit, but I still did enjoy the episode, and it is fun. Uh, but, uh, let's just get on with it, shall we? Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you've subscribed already, but, um, do subscribe. If you're one of those people that watch, is watching it has not subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, because it, it's going to help soon, because we're so close to a 1,000 subscribers but uh, and all that stuff. And uh, explore the description for links for merch and uh, Patreon and my books and other web page, my websites, stuff like that. Uh, it will be much appreciated. Right, off we go. Here it is. Um, we begin obviously with the usual, usual nonsense. All this stuff. Um, right, we begin. Uh, we're on Kronos, um, as we to, as we as it tells us there. Kronos, the Klingon home world. What happened to Praxis? What well, Praxis? A, a moon of Kronos. I'm sure it was, wasn't it? So why is why doesn't Kronos have a ring of debris around it? Uh, but it all tidied up. It must have been because there's nothing there now, is there? But anyway. Uh, I don't know if it's ever been brought up before, but it just occurred to me as we're watching this. But uh, anyway, um, we're on Kronos and we're on a farm. We're on a farm um, that belongs to... I forgot the name of the character. Because I'm an idiot. Uh, Maha... 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 Oh, I don't know how you pronounce it. Maha... I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, voice over Toy G here, or Steve, or whatever, uh, just to say that uh, it's pronounced Mach. Why? Don't know, but it just is. Uh, I listened back, so there we go. FYI. Uh, there's a character, a captain, that we saw in last season, uh, the episode in the, in the fight, um, when, um, and, and old, plan, old the last two episodes of season four, basically, Um the Nick Lacano bit, where everybody said he looked like Tom Paris, and says, we look nothing alike. Uh, and there were a Klingon ship, and the crew had mutinied, thrown the captain out. Uh, who is this fella, Captain Ma? Um, so that's who we 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 we're coming to uh, to uh, to see. And uh, I don't know the name of his brother. Um, his brother's in this, and I've forgotten his name, so it might tell us. <laughs> You know what I'm like. You know what I'm like. I don't take notes. But anyway, we're on his farm, or it's his brother's farm, or it's the family farm. I don't know. He's not a captain anymore. He's been stripped of his captaincy after the mutiny. Um, and so he's trying to capture a tag, and it's you know, it's outwitting him, and his brother is always mocking him. Um, his brother just wants to be a farmer, by the way. Not all Klingons want to be warriors, and that's kind of what this episode is about, I suppose. Um not all Klingons have to be warriors, but they have to do everything honourably. But uh, even farming. But um, he says, one day I will return to battle. And his brother's just laughing at him. But he doesn't really want to. Uh, but I suppose it's ingrained into his uh, warrior, Klingon warrior mind. But anyway. But anyway. Right. So, and then, and then the episode begins. Um, but we get no... 
opening credits like we normally get. It just starts like this, starts at lower deck, showing the farm. All very nice. And we just get um, show a montage of uh, Klingon farm work. I presume these are blood worms uh, that they are harvesting and then turning into blood wine. Uh, it shows him, there he is, putting them all in, in big uh, presses, wine presses, and he's, it shows him stomping uh, on them. There we go. It's, it's, stomping on the presses and getting blood wine so that's where they get blood wine from it's from the blood worms uh, which is which also is gach so that's it everything's from gach isn't it it seems anyway i just thought it was just called blood wine i didn't know it was actually blood but uh, anyway there he's drinking uh, and kind of you know getting used to the quiet life on chronos um, such as it is uh, there they go. They've got the wine in barrels, and the, they've got the the cargo ship that they're going to take to um, to wherever it's going to be delivered to. Uh, and they're always falling out. Uh, there they go. They're heading to this bar. I presume it's in the Klingon capital or whatever. I don't know what it's called. Uh, keeps being called a petach. Anyway, um, oh I and also he kept getting a, a call from uh, Mariner. Beckett Mariner kept. Um, Kept calling him on the community, and he kept ignoring her. Uh, but then she comes into this bar um, in a minute, uh, right? You know, after this, uh, egg, this uh, Klingon beauty is trying to seduce him, uh, but then Marina comes in and uh, he goes and spoils it all. You fraternize with Starfleet humans, so he's cross with that, but uh, anyway. So she's gone to see him, and Boimler's with her, because um, um, cause they've been sent on a mission. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the Sritos is at Praxon 4, um, where um, like Dr. Miglimo um, is uh, going to welcome two really important people. Uh, aboard the ship, there are two of their two of his species, greatest scholars. It turns out they're kind of the food critics, and they're not very nice. And the anyway, so because they're all about food on his own planet of Cloaca. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> it's spelt differently, but it's pronounced Cloaca. And remember, he's a bird. Um, and uh, he's all excited and nervous about meeting them. Anyway, meanwhile, back on the uh, Kronos. Um, uh, oh, I have Boimler. You see, Boimler's now sporting a pencil moustache, but he's more in, impressed with his beard, which is kind of the same as it was last week. But uh, anyway, so his facial hair's coming along. Anyway, uh, so the upshot of, of this is that um, Mariner has a plan for Ma'a or Ma'a to get his captaincy back. Um, um, he, he was stripped of his captains because of um, he's losing his ship and um, and he, he won't get it back because uh, the fellow in charge, the Klingon in charge um, of the committee that, that dishes out captaincies or whatever, um, I killed his brother. So obviously there's some animosity there, but. Um, Anyway, there you see Boimler keeps getting beaten up. But for some reason, he's really enjoying it. He's really into Klingons for some weird reason. Um, so they, they bring up a, an old Klingon, that's it, the Edict of Unreturned Favours. They bring that up. And um, so they're going to go and try and get him his captaincy back. But but later on, we, we discover that he didn't really want it back. But anyway. Anyway, so off, the, off they go. Anyway, these two... Scholars arrive with their bodyguards, and the, you know the the horrible people, the horrible people. Uh, the the crew is trying their best to uh, you know accommodate them, but it's a bit like you know Elan of Troyus. That there's no pleasing them. Anyway, so so that's that. As I said, the, the kind of unrelated stories, I think. But uh, anyway, we've got oversight council chambers. We're at now. Um, I thought I've just seen. Uh, I thought it was a cloud. Say my eyesight's going. <laughs> it's a ship, isn't it? What's that ship got a glowing light in it for? That cloud, I mean. Anyway, um, oh, I, on the hover bikes, look. Right, so 
In they go. This is the fella in the middle that uh, Matt Hart killed his brother. Um, and this chap, uh, who looks a bit like Kang, because he's got the, the eye patch, the, not Kang, um, Chang, uh, eye patch. Um, he's a friend of Matt Hart. Anyway. So... What they've got to do, they've got to go through um, this these, this ritual uh, of pain and all that stuff. So that's what they're going to do. There we go. The thingy of unending pain. Anyway, right, so... Miglimo, whatever the hell he's called, the bird doctor, gives these to a meal, but it turns out it's been replicated. So they say, oh, we don't eat replicated stuff. Um... They're all over dramatic about it. So then he goes and um, he's going to go and actually, you know, cook something properly. Anyway, there we go. The right of an ending pain. Uh, Careless's passage. There we go. Symbolizes Careless's passage through the fields of thorns. Not his actual passage. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we saw we saw this in in TNG, didn't we? When Worf had to go through it for, for his ritual. Um, so they've got to go through. Starts blue, yellow, red. Uh, the voltage doubles each time. So anyway, so they're getting electrocuted. They've got to uh, endure it. And um, by the time they get to the yellow part, you know, it's it's really painful. They think they won't survive the red section. Uh, there goes like 30,000 volts. And then somebody has an idea. Can't remember who. Um that they should all cling to each other. They all climb on Mars Brothers' back. There we go. Uh, and spread the... I don't know if that's how it works, but spread the voltage out between them all. I don't know if that's how it works, but uh, it does. So there you go, they made it. So they've done that that um, that, ri that right. Anyway, meanwhile, they're, they're cooking away, but they're still not satisfied. There you go. And they arrest Miglimo. Is that his name? I can never bloody remember. Yes, Miglimo. Right, how are right. They arrest him. Um, right, next challenge. Oh, they've got to battle this this huge tag. Uh, which they do quite easily. Uh, they sort that out quickly. It turns out it's the tag of um, that fella. Whatever he's called. I can't remember. It, it turns out it's his tag. So, like I said, they sort that out and they tie it up. Um, there you go. It's just his tag. Anyway. So. Um, all right. Then then his, his final task to get his captaincy back. He's basically got to sacrifice one of his crew. So, one of their crew has got to be killed uh, so he can become captain again. So, obviously, he doesn't want to do that. And he, he, he offers up himself. So, he's going to... Be, he's gonna, you know, kill himself, allow himself to be to be uh, sacrificed, and then then that says why he doesn't want to be a captain. <sighs> but Boimler has a uh, words of wisdom, and he talks about when he used to he went to the Titan, thinking that was the best the best thing for him, and uh, says that it turned out it wasn't, and he should have been on the the Cerritos, and sometimes you've got to. Um, you know, do the right thing. But um, anyway, so they've got a plan. Um, right. Anyway, the, so the work out on on the Cerritos that these these critics, you know, scholars, um, have lost their sense of taste, and they say everything tastes horrible. So they've they've um, they've outed them. Um, but anyway, so they'll. Uh, deal with them in a moment right um, oh I they use another ancient um, right or edict or whatever the, the right of um, I forgot what it is but it says in a minute uh, just a minute it'll say here in a minute do, 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 do. there we go the right of forced conscription and they make that fella that uh, that hate that hate him they make him part of the captain's crew of Ma'ar's crew. Um, so he says, uh, I'm going to, you know, you're going to be the sacrifice. Um, obviously, they, anyway, they're going to have a fight. Um, and Ma'ar gets run through. Look, he, he, he beats him and he says, I, I yield. But then as he turns around, he runs him through. Uh, there we go. And so, so he, I think then he kills 
this fella. Um, whatever he's called. <laughs> but they do mention some Klingon names. They, fe- they mention Feklar and then Graythor, uh, which we heard about in Devil's Dew in The Next Generation. So he's killed him. So he's got his captaincy back, but he ain't got a ship. But he's, uh, he's going to use this, this cargo shuttle or whatever it is. That's going to be his ship. And his brother is going to be his crew, and that's how he's going to operate now. He's going to be a, you know, a, a, an honourable farmer. So, anyway. Meanwhile, back on Cloaca or whatever the hell they are. <laughs> um, oh, they're giving him this food. And um, they're saying it's bland. And it turns out they've been giving him shit. Except they don't call it that in this, because they bleep it out. Why did they bleep out the swearing in this? Is it out on, you know, physical media? Is the swearing bleeped out in that as well? I don't know, because I've not got it. Uh, yeah, it's true, this is bleep, and they couldn't taste it because they've lost their sense of taste. So he has um, um, unmasked them. So anyway, so that's that solved. Whatever. Uh, and back on Kronos. Um, oh, we learned that they were sent to uh, check on these dimensional rifts. These, you know, the quantum fissures that had ha- wouldn't have happened near Kronos, wouldn't have opened up near Kronos. And then it, now they've just discovered now, got nothing to do with the rest of the episode, that they're artificial. Somebody's making them. <gasps> duh, 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 they just threw that in. But uh, like I said, that's got bugger all to do with the, the rest of the episode. But uh, that's it. They're going to work on the farm and be honourable Klingon farmers. And that's it. The end. <laughs> The most interesting thing about it is um, we get Sam Witwer. Where is it going to show it? Where's his bloody... Yeah, there we go. We get Sam Witwer. I don't know who he played. It doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't say. He's there on IMDb, but I don't know who he played. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing... I don't think it was Matt R. I'm guessing it was maybe the other fella, the bad guy. I'm guessing. But I could be wrong. Or it could be his brother. I don't know. I don't know who Sam Witwer played. But... Um, yeah, he's way down the bottom of the uh, list. But anyway, so, there we go, that's that episode. Yeah, whatever. It was fine. It wasn't the most amazing episode ever. Um, as I said, it seemed a bit of a filler, to be honest. But it's nice to see Klingons. And, we, and we're learning that, you know, not all Klingons want to be warriors. But we kind of learned that with with Alexander, didn't we? Worf's son um, in TNG and Deep Space Nine. But he did end up becoming a warrior anyway. So... Um, but, um, you know, not all Klingons have to be warriors, do they? They've got to be Klingons that do all the stuff. They've got to be Klingon toilet cleaners and, <laughs> and stuff like that, haven't they? Uh, Klingon road sweepers. It's all got to be done honourably, and I'm sure they do it with a, with sharpened teeth. But anyway, so there we go. And it's nice to see Boimler's facial fuzz coming along with his pencil moustache and his, his beard, he says. <laughs> he mentions his beard. Uh, even though it's just, you know, a few stray hairs. But uh, anyway, so there we go. There we go. Uh, oh, right, Farewell to Farms, the title obviously is a reference to Farewell to Arms, the Ernest Hemingway book. Um, but um, anyway. Right, yeah, so that's it. That's, that's a quick review because, you know, so what? <laughs> but it was enjoyable. But it was a bit of filler, a bit of filler. But uh, anyway. But yeah. Big deal. Uh, what's next week's episode going to be called? What's next week's episode? Uh, oh, my, give it a score. I don't know. Six and a half. That's only because it had nothing to do with the rest of the season. It was a filler episode. Why do they keep doing these filler episodes in seasons of TV that only last for ten episodes? Or sometimes even less than only eight episodes. But uh, anyway, I don't know. Right, so uh, episode five. Oh, my, yes, it's called Starbase 80. Got a question mark at the end. <laughs> Starbase 8, eh? Uh, so that should be interesting. And then the week after of Gods and Angles. Not Gods and Angels, Gods and Angles. That's the week after. Do we have a synopsis? Uh, doesn't look like it, does it? Just a title. Just a title. Starbase 8. So it's like we're going back to that Starbase that um, all the rubbish Starfleet officers get sent to. And remember in that alternate universe that we saw in season one, uh, season one, episode one of season five, uh, that's where the the alternate version of 
um, Captain Freeman. She ended up at Starbase 80, didn't she? But anyway, so there we go. So there we go. So that's um, A Farewell to Farms, episode four. Bit of filler. It was fine. I still enjoyed it, but it was a bit pointless, wasn't it? But, you know, it's not to see Klingons doing stuff and paying sticks and all that. But, uh, you know, what can I say? Yeah, it, it exists. <laughs> and I've given it, I don't know, six and a half out of ten. Uh, but it was okay. It was okay. It was okay. But who's making these quantum rifts? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I suppose we'll find out. Um... In the coming episodes. And all right, so we'll leave it there. We will leave that there. Done with. Right. So, thanks for watching, wherever you are. Look after each other. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you there.